I'm Angie Suddeth Walsh, and my co host is Kathy, Kathy Kate Robertson. I <laughs> messed <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone. And today you may be wondering why I look like this. Well, if you know me at all, you know that when I am passionate about products that I find that work, I like to promote them. And our guest today happens to be a consultant with these products. Now we're not like trying to sell you anything. I just, I always say the proof is in the pudding. So by me being like this, I'm gonna show you exactly the steps that I've been going through. I've been using the products for three weeks now, I think. Um, and we're going to talk about those today. We're just going to we're going to be talking about health today and how important it is. Like it's not just important for what you put inside your body; it's important what you put on your body as well. So, the get our guest today is Lisa Wheat, and her and I have been friends since high school. So I trust her with this stuff. So what I have on right now is the um, charcoal facial mask, and you don't. The good thing with these products is you don't need a lot of them. I, you leave it on for 10 minutes and it's been on for at least 10 minutes. So I'm going to be turning things over to Lisa and Kate here in just a second. But I want to introduce Lisa. Hello. Hello. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. Lisa is a, she is a certified trainer. She's certified so many times we don't even know how many certifications she has. <laughs> she teaches four to five classes a day at four different gyms. She is very healthy inside and out. She's very conscious with what she puts on inside her body and outside of her body. And we're gonna be talking about all that kind of stuff today and giving you tips on how to get um, healthy because it's a new year. Or you'll see some people that when they run, they just look like a beautiful gazelle. <laughs> and it, they just look like, oh, they could run forever. And I'm like, I love those people. I mean, I'm so envious of those people. I wasn't that person. <laughs> Phoebe runner. <laughs> Phoebe what, from was I what? A Phoebe runner. You remember Phoebe from Friends for Shoes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually was the heel striker. That's why I mentioned that. So uh, that's why my heels were so bad. So I had to learn to run properly. I had to learn to run on my forefoot. And so that's what you have to do in order to not strike, go heel toe, to go ball of the foot and then let the foot rock forward. So yeah, so it took a minute for me to get used to that. And um, yeah, I, and I can do that. And still to this day, I'm still teaching a running based class twice a week. Nice. Wow. Maybe I should bring my daughter to see you because she has, she does cross country and she has some issues with her knees and, you know, so they work on things like that with her. Yeah. But, yeah. It's amazing how just a little tweak can make such a huge difference when it comes to running. Oh, absolutely. All the difference in the world. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to touch on, because with when people are joining gyms, a lot of gyms offer personal trainers. Um, they, you were talking about different characteristics to look for in a because it is a like a personal thing like you have to you got to mesh with that person you got to you know um be on the same vibe it, you're not going to want to if you're just starting out you're not going to want to start out with somebody that's been an olympian because they're going to be up here and you're going to be down here and they're going to try and pull you up here and it's going to be a struggle so you want to you want to work up to that so you want to give some tips like with um what to look for like with certifications um what to, uh, like I mentioned to you about, um, like some trainers will try to get you on different supplements and that's a big no. And that, I want to talk on that too. Um, so, yeah. So when you're, when you're shopping for a personal trainer, um, first and foremost, look at their bios, look at what, um, how they are certified, just make sure that they are a certified personal trainer. Um, and make sure that it is a reputable company. Some of the most reputable ones are NASM, um, ACE. Those are two of the top ones right now. Um, some of the other ones, uh, they're still good. And, you know, it just depends. It just depends on the person. Um, also, you know, if they are trying to sell you on supplements or they're just, you know, talking all the time about um 
powders and protein powders and things like that, that you probably are going to want to steer away from that because for one, as a certified personal trainer, you cannot sell or talk about supplements or anything like that. So that is one thing that even when you take that personal trainer test, it's on it. If you answer yes, can you do that? They're going to, they will not pass you. You won't get it. So, um, so yeah, so those are the things that you probably want to steer away from. Also just check out, um, what their likes, what their dislikes are. Do you mesh with them? Do you, you know, um, it has a lot to do with, how they work out. Do you, um, or watch them training somebody, you know, um, give them a try. Don't, you know, ask for a, maybe a single session, see if you like it first, kind of, you know, do a test ride with them. Uh, because sometimes it's not always a one and done and sometimes it is, but you know, you really got to be able to want to listen to that person for that half hour, 45 minutes, hour, however long your session is. And if it isn't, then, you know, that's not going to mesh with you anyway. So um, trying to find that, that person, um, just give them a test run basically and, and read up on their bios for sure. Right. And you mentioned too, that the only person that should be giving you supplement or advice or anything is somebody that's a registered dietitian or nutritionist. They have to have like the, a license to be able to do that, you know, or your doctor and never start any, um, program, whether it's exercise supplement, any of that without consulting your doctor first. Absolutely. Usually your doctor will refer you if he has, if you have issues with nutrition or whatever, he's going to, or she's going to refer you to a nutritionist anyway, because that's usually out of their scale of, of what they're used to talking about as well at their certification too. So usually they're going to direct you towards someone who, who's in that field. So, so that's what, you know, you're, you're going to want to l- listen to that and not to that person that's standing in front of you, trying to sell you a supplement. What about people that don't want to go to the gym? Like you mentioned working at home. What about like, you know, YouTube has all kinds of videos on about yoga and different things. What do you look for when you see those videos that you know that it's a a quality video and that you're going to get something out of it? What are some things to look for? Um, Well, one of the things that I look at the most is um, who's presenting it, you know, (laughs) what does the person look like? What, what is it that they're, I mean, are they selling something or are they, you know, what is it? There, there's usually a catch, um, unless it's just a, a true workout video since COVID that's popped up quite a bit. Um, right. you know, you've got influencers, you've got bloggers, you know, um, nothing frustrates me more is to see an influencer on there doing a workout and them telling you how to work out when their form is off the whole time. And that, that just, I just look at them and go, Oh, hmm. I love the fact that they're doing it. I love that. Um, because that can influence a lot of people to get healthier, but it can also go the other way too. Um, especially if they're telling you to do something that's super crazy that could, they could get hurt. So, um, that's why the personal trainer is always the best option or a group fitness class of sorts. But if that is not in, um, not an option for you, walking, running at home, um, all those things, you videos, there's all kinds of videos that you could, you could totally watch, um, that would keep things yoga. You know, those are all good places to start, um, to get the body moving again. And of course, you know, um, don't worry about your, your food first either. Just get to working out and the food will fall into place later. Just worry about your fitness and then get your food regimen on after that. That is true because if you, you got to start with one thing or else you'll get overwhelmed and stop. Mm -hmm. So if you exercise, like I know for me, um, cause I've always danced or exercised, you know, my whole life. But when I was in bed, and I was, they're telling me to, I need to get up to start exercising. My exercise was to walk from the bedroom 
to the mailbox outside and back. That's all I could do. But I would do that. My mom would walk with me. And then I would say, well, I want to try to walk to the next door neighbor's house, you know? And so we would, we would just add that. And then it was like, add another house, add another house. So if you've been like bedridden or something, you have to start that slow. And Mm -hmm. sometimes like, you know, um, mom and I, we got a rebounder and girl, I, I, I did too much on it. I couldn't even walk. I was like, my mom's like, what's the matter? And I'm like, my legs and my feet hurt so bad. I can't walk. And so I had to go back to where I started, like, like at a minute. And then I increased it to three. And then it was like that kind of thing. Cause that rebounder is really good for your lymphatic system. And like, you know, it's a, they say it's equivalent to 10 minutes on the rebound is, is equivalent to, I forget how many minutes of running. So, I mean, it's like good to have different things. Cause I walk too, but like <clears throat> it's of different, you know, options. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can, there's so many things you can do at home. If you even strength wise, a, a can good in each hand. And you can do biceps and triceps, things like that. So um, you can even use a, hold that in your hand to do sit-ups with, um, squats with. So, you know, lunges, anything that's a, you can do all that at home. You don't have to go to a gym to do that. So you can do all of that at home. I need help, girl. Look. (laughs) (laughs) I just went on showing my jiggles like <laughs> she just let, you're letting it off fly let it fly I have a question yeah. I'm I exercise I I eat pretty well I have cheated over this last you know couple weeks over the holidays obviously with my Dr. Pepper and things like that but um normally I just drink water you know very rarely drink juice um but my issue is I gained a lot of weight from steroids, medications that I was on, the treatments that they were giving me for the lung cancer um, and things like that. And I have, I, I do workouts. I do uh, a combination of dance, uh, martial arts, yoga. It's like a combination. And I've done like physical therapy and things like that. So I do some strength training and I do walk and whatnot, but I'm still finding myself like fluctuating back and forth. I mean, is there anything that you could think of that would help like to finally get rid of that inflammatory weight or the excess water weight and the, um, I don't even know what to call it because what do you call it when it's from steroids, you know, right. <laughs> yeah. application, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you use a, um, smartwatch or any kind of like a Fitbit or anything like that? I do not know. Those are a great tool, um, for you to use only because, or even a heart rate monitor, a strap around your chest, because it, it get, it's, it's a wealth of information, actually. Um, I use, um, I have a smartwatch, so I use the Apple um, one. But before that, I had a gazillion different other um, things that I used. I wore the, um, when I was running all the time, I wore a heart rate monitor all the time. And then I would upload. That was, of course, in the day when we didn't have it to fit around our wrist. We had to wear the strap and we had to then to upload it into the computer to see what, how fast yeah. my splits were and all that, all that. But um, a lot of times when I'm coaching people, um, especially when I'm just training them, uh, I, we use, I use that a lot. Um, and I use that to see if they've touched every color of the rainbow again even in those stats, because those are important things to look at, especially if you're in that orange or red zone and how long you're in that orange and red zone, because you're burning fat then. Um, so that is your fat burned. So it actually, those, those little things 
could be a great tool for you to see. Maybe my heart rate's not getting high enough. Okay. Maybe it's still staying too low. So, um, and plus, you know, um, taking it up, taking it back down, that's a, a great way to burn that fat. Um, I, I tell a lot of people, um, so running uh, lots of cardio, you're burning the calories that you've consumed for that day. You do burn a little bit of your already, your uh, obtained fat, but when you're lifting weights, you're burning the fat that you've already accumulated. So, okay. and then when you're, when you're done lifting those weights, you contend, you continue to burn fat the rest of the day. Right. So that's the beauty of lifting weights and anybody over the age of 30 should be lifting weights period. So right. that's usually my, that's usually my, my plug to get you into a, a weightlifting regimen. I lift weights all the time and I love lifting weights more so than cardio. And I used to be a cardio junkie. So lifting weights is my, is my favorite now. Yeah. I enjoy that more personally, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you might just try that just because the heart rate just might not be getting where you need it to get. Okay. Okay. Good. That's good advice. I'll definitely keep that in mind. And you were saying like up and down. So you mean like doing intervals? Yeah. An interval workout is a wonderful way to, cause you get your cardio and you get your fat burn in at the same time. So, and it's, it's actually one of those workouts that, um, you could do on a daily, you know, unless, you know, if you're doing heavy weight, of course, your body's got to recover the next day. So you can't do that back to back, but hit classes, interval classes. Those are a great way to work out, especially if you don't even, if you, you know, if you get bored with things too. Cause mm -hmm. it changes all the time. So if you get, if you're that person that gets bored with it, a hit or um, a mixed balance class is a perfect way to change everything up. Okay. And if you're doing the same thing and you've done the same thing for so long, it's really good to change it up. The body gets used to it. It gets, it gets sedentary. It just stays there. Yeah. Like plateaus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have a couple of questions. So I always heard that like, if you're walking, that you should um, be just like slightly out of breath. You should be able to have a convert, be able to carry a conversation. And that's how you know that's the correct speed for walking, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. My other question is, is like when people are wanting to lose weight, but you're wanting to build muscle because muscle weighs more than fat, is it better to lose that weight and then start to work on building your muscle or does it matter? Doesn't matter. I don't think it matters, honestly. Um, and that's kind of a myth that fat is fat. It doesn't weigh anymore. Okay. So what it, what it's doing is, um, um, lengthening out and stretching out that muscle instead of, and, and losing that fat. Um, that fat takes up more space in the body where the muscle does not. So that's, that's your difference. That's why um, we start to grow like this versus slender eyes when we lift. So that's, that's your difference. Um, me personally, no, I, anytime you can jump into a strength workout, just go light, go light to start. Of course, you're not going to start throwing a 50 pound weight over your head or anything like that. When you're starting, start light, start with a five pound. Um, if it's bicep curls, start light. If you can finish three sets of 12 and it doesn't bother you on that last rep, then you know that you need a heavier weight. Then you move that weight. You just keep moving that weight up and that's anything, anything you do. So you can do body weight even um, things. So, yeah. I know when I took Irish dancing, like I used, that's what I used to do was my, my dancing. Okay. So like everybody would ask me how uh, today's not a good judgment of that, but I haven't done it for a long time, but that like how you hold yourself in Irish, you got your arms down to your side, you're using your own body as a resistance to keep your core straight you know you're because you're using your abs to do the jumps and the leaps and all of that and even in, in dance all around 
And I would have, I remember my sister-in-law asking me, she was like, how do you get your arms to look like that? And I'm like, dance. And she goes, yeah, but what else? And I'm like, dance. And I, because I really feel like dancing is like an all around because you work your, you work your abs because your core has got to be strong to do those turns and jumps. In Irish, where you're keeping your arms straight, that tone is there. So like when you were saying earlier, um, you know, that the repetition, it takes your body or a person three weeks, right? 21 days before something becomes a habit. And then it's six weeks before you start noticing a difference or people notice a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not overnight and it's not overnight that we gain all the weight either. So, so yeah. And you know, you, you do, I mean, yeah, (laughs) I don't know how to, you also, you know, I tell my, tell a lot of my members, um, you can't out train a bad diet. You know, I see some people come into that gym and they're in there for four hours and they're just killing it. And I hate to see that. I hate to see people put their body through that. And honestly, don't put your body through something like that. If you're not going to try to take care of it too, because you're just punishing yourself. You're just, you know, that is never going to work. Um, So that's the number one thing is just don't punish your body for what you do to it. Um, So, you know, yeah. Sometimes, well, just like my vacation, I just got back from vacation. I did nothing on vacation. I ate everything, drank everything that I wanted to eat. And yes, my belly is a little flabby right now, but, um, I don't care. <laughs> I'll get it back off. It's not a big deal. Um, I know what I did to it <laughs> and I did it. <laughs> it isn't when you work out too for so long, like you can get your metabolism up to like, such a level that it continues to burn. Even if you take some time off or you eat something, you, you, you know, you cheat and eat something that's not good for you. Your metabolism is still up there working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is true. I mean, I wasn't completely sedentary while I was there, but I, I still did. We did a lot of walking. Um, and you know, um, there's a lot of elevation there. So we did, you know, just to get anywhere, you had several elevation levels that we had to go. Um, so I was breathless at times when I got to the top and I was amazed. I'm like just that little, you know, that's a change in exercise too. So that was really good for my body to go through that as well. Um, I wasn't, um, doing all those classes every day, but I still was moving and man, I was shocked at how much, how, how breathless I would get at the top of the hill when, we would finally make it to the top. And I'd look at my husband and go, how can I be this out of breath? <laughs> so I'm in hills. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was, a, it was, a, it was great. It was a great body reset too. And everybody needs those every once in a while. So that's true. What about the old, um, old thing of saying, uh, like you go to the gym one day and you, and you do your arms and then the next day you do your legs and then like you do cardio. So like, cardio three times a week. And then the other days you all train on the body parts. Is that still true mm-hmm. today? Yeah. Judith, yeah. It's a, we call that the 60, 30, 10. So you 60, 60% cardio, 30% weight training, 10% mind and body. So it's, it's then that, then it's an even keel. Then you're, you're just even throughout. And that's what I tell everybody, especially the people that I see that's only doing cardio all the time. 30% of your of your regimen should be weights. So, and then of course, 10% is that mind and body, which is that yoga, that stretching, um, any kind of a reset class or something, you know, to, um, just to give the body a break, um, foam rolling, things like that. Just, you know, um, I like to use a Theragun. I use a Theragun on a daily basis too for my muscles to recover. So, okay. Well, we have today. Kate, you have anything else? You got any other questions or anything you want to hit on? Not at the moment. No, I think we hit everything and more than we talked about originally. So, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I just want to say that I think that your story is very inspiring. You inspire me to do better with, you know, 
getting back into a workout routine. And, um, I, I always eat well, you know, I always eat clean and what I I'm conscious with what I put on and in my body, but I do need to get back to like exercising and stuff. So like, I look to you for motivation for that. Cause I see you doing all these things and I'm like, I need, you know, when I see you do it, then I feel guilty because I haven't been doing it. So it's like, I need to get back to it. I think your story is inspiring. I always say everybody has a story and it can inspire someone. And so I think today with everything that you have shared about your journey and just everything that you've went through and been through and how you live your life is an inspiration and can motivate others to just start with one thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree with that hundred percent. And I'm definitely going to put into practice the little tips that you just gave me for my own personal health and get better, just get better. That's what my daughter always says, get better. <laughs> so just try and do better and, and be better, you know, and you touch, you touched on like meditation and, um, you know, working out and things like that, how it, it it's so important for your mental health as well as your physical health. And I think that it's wonderful. You're in, very inspiring and I'm definitely I feel like amped up and ready to start hit the ground running again you know and get it going and that's do awesome. better. <laughs> yeah I love hearing that I love hearing that I'm gonna be I'm gonna be dressed for my workout you know like so that way when I'm done like I'll go on a walk or I'll go get on the rebound or do something just to get started because that's the thing once you get started then it's ingrained in you where you're like, okay, I got to do it again. I got to do it again. And then you start feeling better. You start sleeping better. Everything, just like you said, starts falling into place and you start paying more attention to like your diet and all of that. So it's today has been, it's been great. It's been great having you on. I thank you for being on here and being a guest and sharing all this information. And uh, it's been an honor. Well, thank you. It's been my honor. Thank you. I appreciate that. Just schedule a day, schedule your, schedule your workouts, put them in your phone, schedule it, lay your clothes out the night before, put your tennis shoes by the front door, make it aware that you have to pass it. <laughs> if I put something on my calendar and it comes up, then yeah, it reminds me once I get back into it, I know I'm going to like that. Cause I used, I was walking five miles a day. I was using a 20 pound slam ball. I was doing basically everything at home or I go to the beach for a while. I was going to a gym and doing some weights and then go, I'd go to the beach for a walk after that. So it was like, you know, um, and it didn't matter the, the weather, if it was cool here in the winter, I just bundle up, you know, to go on the walk. And now uh, we live in Florida, but it does get cold here. <laughs> but yeah. for, like up North, like you still, you can bundle up and go on a short walk, you know, it's harder though when you got that coat on, I'll tell you, because then you start to sweat. That's true. Or you can go like go in the mall if you train from shopping. So there you go. See, yeah, the mall. That's the place. That's where a lot of people go to walk, you know. It's a good time. Yeah. Or even full track. You could do that too. A school track, is that what you said? Yeah, our school allows people to use the uh, workout room and walk on the track when it's not in use. So, well, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's really, especially running or walking or even running on those tracks. It's so much better on the legs and the back. Absolutely, a lot easier than you know on cement or mm -hmm. down to the metro parks on the the gravel and everything over there. Yeah. Well, ladies, I think it's been a great interview today. Kate's going to put in the info because she's our phenomenal person that does all the promos and all of the videos because I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to learn, but she does such a great job. Like I, I told her, I said, when um, I said, I think I'm going to have you do all my reels. I said, because yours looks so much better than mine. And she, I'm going to promote you here, Kate. You, you are for hire. So. <laughs> yeah I appreciate that <laughs> fine work done That's awesome she's phenomenal and Lisa for the beauty counter and you know if you're in the Indianapolis area then check her out and 
uh, her workout where she works out because you're at the YMCA at Vasa and where was the other place? Indianapolis Health Complex. Yeah. So um, check her out. Go check her out. Go pop in a class and like check her out and get yourself going. All right, guys. It's been great. Thanks everybody for being here. We'll see you next time. Until then, Kate. <laughs> Don't forget the marshmallow. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on Celeste's Circle. Don't miss next week when we have our very special guest, Sydney Walsh. We're going to talk about skinwalkers, experiences, and fear. What are your fears? You can catch us right here on Celeste's Circle YouTube channel, or you can go to our podcast and listen if you prefer. Also, Celeste's Circle, available on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Anchor.fm, and more. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And make sure you hit that bell notification so that you get notified whenever we upload a new episode. So until next time, thanks for watching and listening. We'll catch you around the bonfire. Don't forget the marshmallows.